Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial about Qt. In this one, we're going to talk about Qt 5.12, which is a new version that was released back in December of the last year. And I want to take this chance to wish you guys a happy new year. This is the first video tutorial we do in 2019. So happy new year, guys. Qt 5.12 is the latest version of Qt at the time of this recording. And it is the new version you should be using if you happen to start using Qt for a new project or you should even update if that is doable in your project. This is an LTS version, which means that it is going to be supported for a longer period of time. The Qt company is supporting LTS versions for three years now. Apart from the fact that it is an LTS version, it also has a few features that were added in the Qt libraries and we have a few highlighted here, but this is not an exhaustive list. So you may want to search more if you want to see an exhaustive list of the new features in Qt 5.12. A new table view component was introduced in QML. So this is a very big thing. I like it a lot. The JavaScript standard was upgraded to ES7 and that's going to give you access to the new features from the JavaScript standard. Qt for Python has also been pushed to the next level. They claim that everything you can do in C++, now you can do in Python. This is a big thing. Please note that Qt for Python is a technology preview, so you might want to test it out and see if it works for you. There's another tech preview, which is Qt for WebAssembly, which is a technology that is going to allow you to run Qt applications in the browser. Qt for remote objects has also been introduced. It is a technology that is going to make it very easy to talk between different processes that are running Qt. Qt for WebGL streaming is also another technology that is going to allow you to control your Qt application from a browser but it is more tailored to a small number of people accessing your application from a browser. So let's look at these things in a little bit more detail. Qt 5.12 is an LTS version, so it is going to be supported for three years. It was released in December 2018. You can expect for it to be supported at least towards the end of 2021. It follows two other LTS versions. 5.6 and 5.9, and 5.6 is going to end its support in the first months of 2019. So if you are on 5.6, it is a good time to move to the latest version. As usual, when a new version of Qt is released, at least in the family of Qt5, there are no significant changes in the APIs that you are using in your application. So if you have an application that was written in 5.6 or 5.9, it's probably going to build, and if there are changes, the changes are going to be minor. This version also introduced a bunch of bug fixes, and it is ideal for organizations to run the Qt applications on top of LTS Qt versions because the API is going to be much more stable. The table view component was also introduced in QML. This is a new view that you can use in QML to display your models. And it is very convenient if you want to display your models in tables. The new table view component has good performance. When items are scrolled out of the view, their memory that they were using is reclaimed and used to show the other items that just fell in the viewable space on your screen area. This is a very good thing. And I think we're going to do another tutorial on table view to show you how you can use it in your Qt Quick applications. The JavaScript engine has been upgraded to ECMAScript 7, which is a new standard of JavaScript. This is not the newest standard, but it's a great leap forward because it gives you a number of features that you can use in JavaScript in your QML applications. If you are a JavaScript guy, you must know that ES6 is the great leap forward in JavaScript. Things like iterators, arrow functions, classes, and modules were introduced there. ES7 adds a bunch of new features that you can use to write your code in JavaScript in a more modern way, and you can take advantage of these features now in Qt Quack. Qt for Python has also been revamped. It is now a technology preview. You can uh, try it in Qt 5.12, and they are going to officially release it in the few upcoming Qt versions. Qt for Python is now much more stable. 
They even claim that everything you can do in C++, now you can do in Python, which is a great thing. So if you are a Python developer and were kind of scared of C++, that's no longer a limitation. You can write Qt GUI applications using Python now. Another thing is that Python is the language of machine learning and artificial intelligence. And if you happen to need these features, it is very likely that you're going to find tons of Python libraries and you can easily build user interfaces on top of those libraries very easily now using Qt for Python. So this is a good thing. Another thing you should know is that Qt for Python is really a rebrand of the PySide project and they are trying to give it another name and push it forward under the umbrella of the Qt company. This is going to be a challenge to PyQt, which is another binding for writing GUI applications using Python. PyQt is also very good. In the last few years, it was actually the best binding for Python that was available, but you can expect Qt for Python to be even better, so it's going to be a challenge for PyQt. I am interested to see how this will turn out, actually. Another thing that is on the table is WebGL streaming, which is a technology that is basically going to allow you to access your Qt applications remotely in the browser. The way it works under the hood, the commands for rendering your applications are serialized and sent to the browser to be displayed. This is a very limited way to use your Qt applications remotely. So it is going to be useful if you are an engineer trying to debug your application remotely or do something, it is not a thing you would use if you wanted your application to be used like a normal web application. For example, if you are using this WebGL streaming, your app can either run locally or remotely because you can do multiple connections on one process. If you need to connect to your application both locally and remotely, you need to run it in different processes then you can use different inter-process communication mechanism to communicate between these two processes. So it is not a thing that is really meant for multiple people. It is a one person, two person kind of thing. Qt for WebAssembly is a thing to look at if you want your application to be used by a lot of people. The way this works, you cross compile your application in WebAssembly bytecode and your code can run in the cloud and multiple people can connect to this. If you are interested in this technology, you can search and read related documentation. Another thing that they introduced is Qt Remote Objects, which is going to make it easier to communicate between processes or even Qt applications running on different computers. And as usual, you can read more on this in the documentation. Okay, this is all I had, guys. If you happen to be in need of a video tutorial on Qt, do visit our school. It is located here. The link is going to be shared in the description below. And you can find different courses on Qt C++, Qt Quick, and even how you communicate between C++ and Qt Quick. We even have a membership you can buy to have access to all the current courses and future courses and never have to pay again. So check it out if it is something you might be interested in. This is all I had today, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.